Today's case is about a young girl who survived sexual violence, but whose life has been ravaged by the lifelong injury left on her body and the horrific memory of the day of the incident. Today's case can be disturbing, so viewer discretion is highly advised. This case is known in Korea as one of the most infamous criminal cases involving young children, which many of you might have already heard about. So let's get right into today's case, the case of Cho Do Sun. On December 11, 2008, at around 8.30 in the morning, Na Young, who was 8 years old at the time, was on her way to school in Wonguk-dong in the city of Ansan, South Korea. Here, Na Young is not her real name, and in order to protect the child, the girl's true identity has never been revealed. When she walked past a church, Na Young was approached by a middle-aged man who asked whether she was a churchgoer. Na Young, apparently afraid of the stranger, said no and tried to leave. He then angrily yelled at her that she had to go to church and dragged her inside the church building to the restroom on the first floor. He locked the bathroom door and placed her on the toilet and forced her to perform oral sex on him. When she refused, he became angry. He then bashed her multiple times and bit her on the cheek. He choked her until she fainted. Then he started brutally abusing her, causing horrific internal injuries. It was rumored at the time that the abuser took her organs out to wash out evidence after violating her, but this has been confirmed to be untrue and nothing in court records mentions these acts. But those documents still indicate that what she had to go through that day was beyond horrific. After he was done, he fled the scene with a bleeding, unconscious child lying on the floor in the bathroom. Cold water was left running to wash away evidence. Remember, it was a cold day in December and she could have frozen to death. Against all odds, the brave girl miraculously survived and then managed to crawl out of the bathroom. She shouted for help and was rescued by a passerby. Around 9 a.m., Paramedics and police arrived at the scene. As police searched the crime scene for clues, they found blood traces that appeared to have been wiped out with a mop. Fingerprints near the toilet were all erased, but police were able to find fingerprints on the door frame. The investigation began and fingerprints from the crime scene were cross-referenced with those of an ex-convict. The man was identified as 57-year-old Cho Do Sun, who already had 17 criminal records by then, including a charge of abusing a 19-year-old girl in the 1980s. When Dayong arrived at the hospital, her face was covered in blood and was so swollen it was hardly recognizable. Her pants and underwear were removed, and her insides were hanging outside her private area. The doctors couldn't believe that she was alive, considering how serious her injury was. She had significant internal bleeding and major trauma to her face and abdomen. Soon she had emergency surgery. Nayong's anus had to be removed and an artificial anus colostomy was performed on her. A colostomy is a surgery that creates a hole, an opening for the large intestine on the abdomen due to the loss of the anus. The extensive injury left her with a hole in her stomach, with a colostomy bag attached to her, as 80% of her rectum, large intestine, and female genitals were permanently damaged from the abuse. Aside from the physical wound, the mental and emotional trauma she endured is difficult to comprehend. After the incident, she drew this picture during psychotherapy. She wrote, 60 years in prison, hoping he would never get released to find her. The eight-year-old struggled between life and death, but fought through, trying so hard to say everything she remembered about her abuser while in the hospital. Even though Nayang was in a lot of pain, receiving painkillers 24 hours a day, she identified her abuser through photos. She also recorded a video statement, which was sent to the police. During the first trial, Cho Do Sun consistently argued he was innocent, saying he saw someone coming out of the bathroom where Nayong was found. 
He then changed his theory and said he was drunk and did not remember anything. His objective was to receive a lenient sentence by claiming to be mentally and physically weak. In his defense, he wrote over 300 letters to the judge, claiming he wasn't the kind of monster who would hurt a child. Prosecutors sought a life sentence for Cho, but the court accepted Cho Dusun's claim. He was declared mentally impaired because he was drunk at the time and could not distinguish his actions. The court handed down a 12-year prison term for Cho. Cho appealed, saying the sentence was too harsh for a man who does not remember anything, and the trial went up to the Supreme Court. The prosecution was heavily criticized after the court's sentencing because they decided not to appeal the decision and accepted that he was mentally weak at the time. In Korea, if the court acknowledges the reason for reducing the sentence, including being in a state of mental weakness, judges must reduce the sentence by half. The public criticized prosecutors for not challenging the argument that Cho was too drunk to remember anything and he was mentally weak. Remember, police found bloodstains at the scene, but they were wiped out with a mop nearby, which is an apparent attempt to erase evidence. If he was too intoxicated to think straight, would he be wiping out his fingerprints and blood on the toilet and the wall? Also, prosecutors made the very ill Nayong attend the interrogation while she was still recovering from surgery. On top of that, prosecutors made her testify four times because they didn't know how to use the recording device properly, and the recording tape was not recording. A lousy investigation led to her family suing the prosecution, and eventually the prosecution had to compensate them 13 million won. On December 24, 2009, the Supreme Court upheld the decision of the first trial, and Cho was sentenced to 12 years in prison and seven years of wearing a GPS angle monitor. While the attack has remained one of South Korea's most heinous sex crimes, a petition was posted on the presidential office Chongwade's website saying Cho Dusun should never be released. The post gained over 200,000 votes. Petition supporters said the nation must protect all underage victims, and 12 years doesn't compensate for the victim's traumatic experience and lifelong injuries. But on December 12, 2020, Cho was released from prison. After his release, dozens of people, including YouTubers, flocked to his house demanding justice, claiming the jail term was too short. A few days after his release, a man in his 20s broke into Cho's home and assaulted him with a blunt object. He was not seriously injured. As a result of Cho's case, the country's judicial system has come under criticism for being lenient towards sex offenders. People voice the need for harsher punishment for those who try to excuse their criminal behavior by saying they were drunk. Even so, we still hear absurd rulings giving alcohol-impaired men only one or two-year prison sentences. In January 2010, the girl had successful surgery to repair her colon and reproductive system, but it is known that she still has to wear diapers. In an interview on July 30th, 2017, Nayong's father said the victim had studied hard for the KSAT exam and gained admission to university. According to her father, she wants to become a doctor and heal sick people. Her concern, however, is that she might again encounter Cho after becoming a doctor. Cho's residence was within a kilometer of the victim's home, and the court only handed him a 100-meter minimum restraining order from the victim as permitted by the law. The victim's family ended up leaving their longtime home in Ansan a month before Cho's return thanks to financial aid from a fundraising campaign. The public was furious that it was the victim, rather than the criminal, who had to move. The release of Cho Dusun brings to mind the past when sex crimes were not taken seriously enough by the legal system. His freedom shows that future efforts need to be made to improve the legal system. Our children should be growing up in a country aspiring to be fairer and safer than that was in the past. That's all for today. 
Thanks for watching.